Hello and welcome. My name is Susan Hoffman. I am the Associate Athletic Director and NCAA Compliance Officer. Today you'll be learning about the rules and regulations of the NCAA and SUNY Brockport with regards to your participation in intercollegiate athletics. Before we get started, please take a moment to enter me as a contact in your phone. A couple of reminders when you reach out to me. Please identify who you are and what sport you play. Feel free to contact me until 10 p.m. at night. And remember, if you have a social misfortune at 2 a.m., that is the time you contact your coach. Before we get started with all of the rules and regulations, take a moment to watch the following video from Richard Carthon, a former two-sport athlete from Tulane University. He identifies five key points for being a successful student athlete. Be where your feet are. Be where your feet are is a popular phrase my football coach used to tell me every day. And what he meant by this is, wherever your feet are, it's where your focus should be. Where in the football field, it should be on football. Where in the classroom, it should be on your studies. When you're in this auditorium, it should be on what I'm saying. Be where your feet are. Focus. One of five key points I'm going to be touching on tonight. As a dual sport athlete at Tulane University playing both football and baseball, I've been blessed to learn many valuable lessons both inside and outside of sports. Tonight, I'd like to share some of these experiences. I want to be a voice for student athletes tonight. And the best way I know how is by sharing my story, a student athlete's untold story. And the first thing I need from you all tonight is focus. Now, let me tell you about my typical week. Now, I've done the math. Everyone in this room has 168 hours in a week. But in my week, if you account for eating, sleeping, mandatory and voluntary practices, working out, playing games, traveling, studying, going to class, and everything else, on a good day, I have about three or four hours of free time. That means that if I want to go to an extracurricular, such as an organizational meeting, or if I want to go take a nap, or even hang out with friends, I have roughly three or four hours a day to get that done. Discipline, which is my second point, has become essential to my life. Every day I wake up, I make a list of items that I have to get done. And as I check off each of these lists on my items, I have a little bit more time for things that I want to do as, a time, as opposed to things that I have to do. Being disciplined in time management leads me right into my third point, production. Within these time constraints, I'm expected to be successful by producing results. This production can be measured in various ways. In the classroom, by producing a high GPA, on the field by producing good stats and helping my team win, in society by being involved in community service and being involved around campus. In all these different environments, they want production, they want results, not excuses. It's challenging for my teachers to understand what it's like to come from a three-hour practice followed by strength and conditioning and then go to their three-hour night class and stay alert and attentive. No excuses. My coach doesn't want to hear about how I stayed up all night studying for a test or writing a paper, and that's why the next day at practice, I'm going through the motions. No excuses. My organizations don't want to hear about how I can't attend their meeting because the only reason I'm not going to go to their meeting is because I've been averaging three hours of sleep for the last four nights. No excuses. They all want results, production. This fact brings in how I can accredit my success in being productive leads right into my fourth point, integrity. Now, I believe this picture can summarize what I think success is. This can is an actual can that sits on my desk, and I look at it every single day. <laughs> success comes in cans, not in cannots. I am a huge advocate of the power of your word. If I say that I'm going to get something done, it's getting done, period. One of my life mantras is that you make time for what's important to you, not excuses. So all I want you to just take a moment to reflect. What motivates you? Is it family? Is it money? Your faith? What motivates you? My integrity drives my motivations. Faith, family, friends. What drives your integrity? One of the greatest stories of integrity I've ever been told was by a sports psychologist, Dr. Elko. He came and spoke to my football team my sophomore year, and he showed us this picture. 
A lot of you might be familiar with this picture and have probably have seen it tattooed on people's bodies. But what you might not know is that the artist that drew that is Albert Stewart. And the reason he drew it was in memory of his brother. When they were teenagers, they had a critical decision to make. They could either both go to the minefields or one brother could pay for the other brother to go to the art guild. Because at the time, being in the arts was the best way to make the most money. So what they decided was that Albert would go to the art guild and the brother would pay for it by going to the minefield every single day. So after some time, this brother finished the art guild, made some money, and he threw a huge feast in celebration. At the feast, he got up and he made a toast to his brother, thanking him for all the sacrifices he ever made, and said that he now had enough money to send his brother to the art guild. At this, his brother started hysterically crying. He went over to his brother, gave him a big hug, gave him a kiss, and he showed him his hands, those hands. And at that, Albert began to cry because he understood there was no way he would ever be able to take part in the arts. He made the ultimate sacrifice, the ultimate sign of integrity, to be a man of his word and provide a brighter future for his family and at his own expense. So I want to ask each one of you in here, who would you go to mines for? This leads right into my last point, teamwork. Now, I've been on a lot of teams, and I can say that the teams that have the most enjoyable are the teams that have the most chemistry. And this chemistry is built by building both trust and respect. But these must be earned, not given. You build respect when it's 110 degrees outside, and you have 24, 110 yard sprints to do in under 12 seconds. And you think you're about to pass out, and you're thinking about quitting, and you think you might even throw up. But you keep going because that guy next to you, you don't want him to beat you. And you don't want him to give up. So you push forward. You build trust when you turn a weakness into a strength. When your coach calls you out in the fall and says, you might not make the team because you let the team in strikeouts. And you have the lowest batting average on the team. And you come back in the spring. And not only do you make the team, but you lead the team in hits. In both of these scenarios, not only do you have respect for these people, but you trust that when they're given a challenge, they're going to rise to the occasion and prosper. That's one of the main reasons why I believe that trust is the key to teamwork. I believe that building and mending trust within relationships is absolutely key to having a successful career and also just a beneficial life. Building and mending trust within my relationships has done nothing but benefit my life. That's one of the main reasons why I want to join a business fraternity on campus, because I want to be around that caliber of people that are constantly striving for more, constantly pushing to be at their best, just because being surrounded by those people does nothing but help me elevate my game and make sure that I'm on top of what I'm doing. And in essence, we're all just making each other better. Because whether you're an athlete or whether you're a regular person, it doesn't matter, because when you think about your accomplishments at the end of the day, you don't think about what you did. You think about what you did with those people. You think about the times and the accomplishments that you had with everyone around you. Now, I hope I was able to attain y'all's focus tonight, but I want to make sure I leave y'all with these five key points. Wherever your feet are, that's where your focus should be. Remain disciplined so you can be the most time efficient. Produce results, not excuses. Success comes in cans, not in can -nots. Build trust with others so that you can become part of the ultimate team. Please take these five points with you and watch and see how much you can accomplish. Thank you. As we review the rules and regulations of your eligibility, please remember it is your responsibility to know the rules. If you are unclear of something, then contact your coach or myself. It is better to address this before a violation occurs. Before you can try out for a team, you must complete an array of paperwork and be cleared to participate by the health center, athletic training room, and compliance officer. All of this must be completed before you can start practicing. The NCA requires all student athletes to have medical insurance that covers their participation in intercollegiate athletics. At Brockport, we do not provide individual medical coverage. Therefore, it is mandatory that each student athlete provide proof of personal medical coverage before they can start practicing. Since the college does not provide insurance, all medical expenses are the responsibility of the student athlete or their parent. This includes all deductibles and out-of-pocket expenses. Prior to participation in intercollegiate athletics, all student athletes 
must have a physical from their primary care physician on file. Additionally, everyone that is trying out for a team must be cleared to participate. There are four scenarios on how to be medically cleared to participate. You have a pre-entrance physical on file and the Hazen Health Center staff clears you. After review of your pre-entrance physical, the Hazen Health Center staff would like to meet with you to review a medical situation. You are cleared once you have an appointment with the staff. After reviewing your pre-entrance physical, you need to be cleared by the athletic training staff due to an injury or chronic condition. After after reviewing your pre-entrance physical, the Hazen Health Center staff needs clearance from an orthopedic or a cardiologist. In addition to the medical paperwork, there are a number of forms on the college's health center website that need to be completed. There is education information regarding concussions and mental well-being, and there's the eligibility document that needs to be completed as outlined in this presentation. All forms should be completed prior to coming to campus. As part of the NCAA requirements, as well as SUNY Brockport, all student athletes must complete a sexual assault prevention program annually. At the present time, the program is slated to be ready on August 15th. Once the program is released, you will receive an email in your Brockport student email with the link and deadline for completion. The final step in part completing the process to try out for a team is participating in an NCAA compliance and eligibility meeting. The next portion of this presentation is the meeting. The NCAA mandates that all student athletes must be enrolled full-time to be eligible to participate in intercollegiate athletics. Full-time at Brockport is defined as 12 credit hours or nine credit hours if you are a graduate student. Note, there are NCA bylaws that permit a student athlete to be enrolled in less than 12 credit hours if they are in the last semester of coursework to complete their degree. If you are considering this option, please connect with a compliance officer to ensure that you are eligible. It is critical to always add a course before you drop. As soon as you are registered for less than 12 credits, you are immediately ineligible for intercollegiate participation. If you practice and or compete as a part-time student, even if it is for one day, you have created an NCA violation and you are also deemed ineligible. Competing while enrolled part-time also creates a violation for your team. Don't let this happen. If in doubt, contact your coach or compliance officer. If you need to repeat a course, these credits count towards full-time status for the semester. You do not need to be to take 12 new credits plus the repeated courses. As a student athlete, you are eligible for one credit of participation per academic year, up to four credits in your career. In order to earn the credit, you must complete the season. If you have a season ending injury, you are not eligible for the credit. The compliance officer will add the credit to your course load once the season is completed. If you do not see the credit on your banner schedule, then the credit has not been added. Do not assume you are enrolled in the course when making decisions to withdraw from another course. In order to continue participating in your sport from year to year, you must meet the following minimum requirements. As a student at Brockport, you must maintain a GPA of a 2.00. The GPA must be earned in the previous semester or you must have an overall GPA of at least a 2.00 to continue participating from semester to semester. The only exception to this rule is that the first semester freshmen, transfer, and winter sport athletes that compete over two semesters must earn at least a 1.5 fall GPA to participate in the spring semester. Students can utilize the winter session courses to improve their GPA. In addition to maintaining a GPA, student athletes must maintain satisfactory progress towards their degree. Satisfactory progress at Brockport is defined as 20 academic credits each academic year. Winter session and summer sessions can be used to earn the required credits. 
The NCAA defines an athletic career in two parts, seasons and semesters of participation. NCAA states a student athlete has 10 full-time semesters to complete four years of athletics in each sport. If a student participates on a club team at an institution that also sponsors an intercollegiate athletic team in the same sport, the student is using NCAA eligibility. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, all spring sport teams were not charged with a season or semester of eligibility during the spring 2020 semester. Given the unpredictable future of the pandemic, the NCAA has provided a blanket waiver to all student athletes at the NCAA Division III level for the entire 2021 academic year. This means that if your team just practices for the entire season, you will not use a semester or year of eligibility. Also, if a team starts to compete and then is shut down due to the virus before the 50% mark of total contest, no student athlete will be charged with a season of eligibility. A semester is used when a student is enrolled full-time and attends classes on the first day of the semester. If the student drops to part-time status or withdraws from all coursework after attending classes on the first day of the semester is still used against the 10. Summer and winter sessions do not count against the 10 semesters. Sessions do not count against the 10 semesters. A season of athletics is used when a student athlete participates in an intercollegiate contest against other institutions or a student athlete participates in practice following the first intercollegiate contest that he or she would have been eligible to participate in. Normally, a season of athletics is used when a student athlete participates in an intercollegiate contest against another institution, or a student athlete participates in practice following their first intercollegiate contest that he or she would have been eligible to participate in. At the Division III level, redshirting is not allowed. You are either on the team or not. If you practice with the team but do not play in any contest during the traditional season, you have still used the season of eligibility. If you are not playing on the team for the year, you cannot receive any benefits awarded to a student athlete, such as meals, lodging, or transportation. Unfortunately, season ending injuries occur every year. If a student athlete sustains a season ending injury that is documented by our team physician, the student athlete may be able to receive a year of eligibility back. There are specific requirements to receive this waiver. The certified athletic trainer, team physician, and compliance officer will work with to submit the waiver if appropriate. In-season versus out-of-season. The NCAA clearly defines in-season and out-of-season athletically related activities. So, what's the difference? In-season is defined in two segments, the traditional and the non-traditional. Winter sports have one continuous season. season. Interaction with coaches, strength and conditioning staff, and others is unrestricted in season. Both segments are limited in duration over time, but not in daily limits. Additionally, student athletes in season cannot participate on outside teams. This is particularly important when you are playing in indoor leagues during the winter time. Out of season is the time before the start of the traditional. Between the traditional and non-traditional segments during the academic year and the summertime, participating in pickup games, skates, conditioning session, primarily with teammates is acceptable as long as it is not mandatory. Part of the NCAA paperwork includes a form regarding NCAA drug testing. Please note that any student athlete is subject to drug testing at any time during the academic year by the NCAA. Teams participating in NCAA championships are subject to drug testing. Included in the NCAA drug testing program is a list of banned substances by the NCAA. It is imperative that you are aware of what you are putting into your system. Some of these substances might be banned by the NCAA. Tobacco use of any kind is prohibited. This includes chewing tobacco and cigars. As research shows, the use of vaping has extremely detrimental effects on the overall health of an individual with significant damage to the lungs over extended use. 
As a student athlete, you are not allowed to use your name, image, or likeness association to Brockport Athletics to earn an income, but you are able to participate in promotional activities not related to athletics, including promoting or endorsing commercial products or services. Promotional activities include charitable, educational, or not-for-profit events media. Student Athlete Code of Conduct. Your actions as a student athlete are being governed not only by the college and local law enforcement, but also the Department of Athletics. As a student athlete, you will need to abide by the Student Athlete Code of Conduct to continue to be a Golden Eagle. Only a small percentage of high school students get the privilege of playing college athletics. It takes a dedicated and gifted athlete to play at this level. Your coach believed in you to recruit you and be a member of the Golden Eagle family. As a student athlete, you are afforded a number of experiences that others do not have in college. As part of the student athlete experience, you also have more responsibilities to your teammates, coaches, and college. As a student athlete, you are expected to be a role model, not only while competing, but within the classroom, on campus, and within the community. There are more rules you need to abide by so that you and your team can be successful. There are rules regarding your athletic NCAA eligibility, academic eligibility, and conduct as a student. As a member of the intercollegiate athletic team, you must agree to follow the following student athlete code of conduct pillars. People will know you are a student athlete by the way you carry yourself, as well as most of the time you'll be wearing team gear. They will be observing your behaviors, both good and bad, and will not hesitate to report the poor behavior to your coach or administration. Disrespectful behavior will not be tolerated. You must treat others like you would like to be treated yourself. In four or five years, your athletic career will be completed. It is critical that you take responsibility for your academic success so that you will not only be able to compete, but also earn your degree. Remember, most majors require a 3.00 GPA to be accepted into the program. As a role model for the college, our student athletes are called upon to be involved in a variety of community service activities. Those experiences not only enhance your education, but provide a service to others. Good sportsmanship is critical. Poor displays of sportsmanship impact entire teams as well as the college. Don't be that team. In this day and age, it is very difficult to live without social media. It is informational, educational, and important part of one identity. It is a way to share your interests, beliefs, experiences, and excitement about something. It is a way to have conversations with friends and family. Social media was probably part of your recruiting process when you decided on Brockport. It is a wonderful tool when used correctly, but it can have significant implications if it's used to share inappropriate or illegal com content. When you post something, the post becomes part of your social history, and like history, it cannot be erased. It is imperative that you understand that what you post can be connected to you for years and years and have significant consequences on your future both personally and professionally. Think before you post. If you are in an altered state, refrain from posting on social media. It might seem funny at the time, but down the line, when a future employer is doing a background check, it might prevent you is doing a background check, it might prevent you from getting the job. The use of alcohol and drugs as a student athlete is counterproductive to all the hard work you've done in the weight room and in your sport. Don't waste an entire week of hard work on one night of partying. Violence of any kind is not tolerated in our department. We expect our student athletes to control their actions and emotions when it becomes a volatile situation. Be an active bystander and diffuse the situation, not an instigator. Bottom line, no means no, regardless of circumstances. As part of the NCA and SUNY mandate regarding education on sexual assault prevention, please watch the following video and be prepared to answer a few questions in the eligibility paperwork. If you're still struggling with consent, just imagine instead of initiating sex, you're making them a cup of tea. You say, hey, would you like a cup of tea? 
and they go, oh my God, I would love a cup of tea, thank you, then you know they want a cup of tea. If you say, hey, would you like a cup of tea? And they're like, uh, you know, I'm not really sure. Then you can make them a cup of tea, or not, but be aware that they might not drink it. And if they don't drink it, then, and this is the important bit, don't make them drink it. Just because you made it doesn't mean you're entitled to watch them drink it. And if they say, no thank you, then don't make them tea. At all. Just don't make them tea. Don't make them drink tea, don't get annoyed at them for not wanting tea, they just don't want tea, okay? They might say, yes please, that's kind of you. And then when the tea arrives, they actually don't want the tea at all. Sure, that's kind of annoying, as you've gone to all the effort of making the tea, but they remain under no obligation to drink the tea. They did want tea, now they don't. Some people change their mind in the time it takes to boil the kettle, brew the tea and add the milk. And it's okay for people to change their mind, and you are still not entitled to watch them drink it. And if they are unconscious, don't make them tea. Unconscious people don't want tea, and they can't answer the question, do you want tea, because they're unconscious. Okay, maybe they were conscious when you asked them if they wanted tea, and they said yes, but in the time it took you to boil the kettle or brew the tea and add the milk, they are now unconscious. You should just put the tea down, make sure the unconscious person is safe, and this is the important part again, don't make them drink the tea. They said yes then, sure, but unconscious people don't want tea. If someone said yes to tea, started drinking it, and then passed out before they'd finished it, don't keep on pouring it down their throat. Take the tea away. Make sure they are safe, because unconscious people don't want tea. Trust me on this. If someone said yes to tea around your house last Saturday, that doesn't mean they want you to make them tea all the time. They don't want you to come around to their place unexpectedly and make them tea and force them to drink it, going, but you wanted tea last week, or to wake up to find you pouring tea down their throat, going, but you wanted tea last night. If you can understand how completely ludicrous it is to force people to have tea when they don't want tea, and you are able to understand when people don't want tea, then how hard is it to understand when it comes to sex? Whether it's tea or sex, consent is everything. And on that note, I'm going to make myself a cup of tea. Being part of a team is exciting. It gives you immediate connections with fellow students. It offers you an immediate support system from your coaches and an instant family. Fitting in with a team does not include singling out individuals or groups of individuals and making them do something to become members of the team. Hazing is not tolerated with intercollegiate athletics or on campus. We have many individuals that support our student athletes throughout the year. Our president is our number one fan. Dr. McPherson attends all of our home contests and truly enjoys that time. If a team were to be involved in a hazing incident, not only would the individuals be sanctioned, but the team could lose their season. It's not worth it. As a NCAA student athlete, it is imperative that you remain informed of the expectations and policies of the governing bodies of your sport. If you have a question, ask. It is better to ask more questions than create an NCAA violation that impacts your team and the college. When you complete the eligibility paperwork, you will be asked to sign a statement that you will abide by the Student Athlete Code of Conduct. The SUNY Brockport Student Athlete Handbook is a wealth of information. Please refer to it when you have questions. It can be found on the Brockport Athletic website. A few reminders to be successful during your season. The season is long. Stay on track. If you need help, ask. Represent well. Successful student athletes not only need to train their bodies, but also train their minds to be strong and resilient. As you start your academic and athletic careers at Brockport, you will have new challenges, new cultures, new friends, new friends, and new coaches. You are going to experience a lot of firsts, new freedom to control your own time, new friends. You might share a room for the first time. You'll have new coaches. You'll need to be self-motivated and disciplined. Your classes will be harder. Your professors will not know you. You'll have more responsibility and you'll have a new cultural experiences.
Dear Mental Health, I wanted to take the time to say thank you for being strong even in the hardest moments. I have always wanted to push myself, to stay busy, not having the chance to breathe in order to be the best person and athlete I can be. When mom and pops dropped me off at South Quad that faithful move-in day, I denied you were not at your best. But let's be honest, freshman year is not easy being away from home. It took me a while to settle into my groove, to get into a routine, to create a new life that was no longer high school. The expectations were high. I needed to perform and be at the top of my game to show everyone I could do this. I need you to know I was trying to get better. I am still trying to get better. Trying to save shots, being a wave of positive energy, singing in my acapella group because these are the things that make me, me. I realized it was okay to feel overwhelmed. To keep up with school, lacrosse, a social life, it's not supposed to be easy. You see mental health, I needed to ask for help sooner. From my pals around me, to call the people I love, and also to find the people here at Michigan that can help me. Through self-reflection, journaling, my growth has risen to the surface, and you, mental health, are the key to our success. I believe in being me, my most authentic self, to be the best version that others can count on. For I know my road has been hard, with a few bumps, but this weight on my moped was not meant for me to carry all on my own. It has taken me this long, from freshman and now senior year, to realize that it's the people surrounding me that are the ones getting me through the tough times. It's these people that have shaped my story, giving me the strength to keep smiling, giving me the power to keep saving. And it's these people that I am forever thankful for because they are the ones who remind me to just breathe. You are more than an athlete. Strengthening your mind is just as important as strengthening your body. Asking for help is a sign of strength. When you have a challenging situation or need help, you can reach out to a lot of individuals on campus. Academics. As you embark on your academic career at Brockport, you must be as committed to your academics as athletics because you cannot have athletics without a strong academic focus. Here are some tips on how to be successful in the classroom. Remember, you cannot miss class for practice. Make sure you're on time for your classes. Introduce yourself to your teacher after class and let them know you are a student athlete. Remember to turn in your assignments, sit in the front of the classroom and participate, sign up for presentations early. When it's time to register for next semester, ask your teammates about professors. Get help if you need it. It is okay to ask for help. Schools are different for student athletes in the departments of registration and records, financial aid, and academic advisement. Always identify yourself as a student athlete when working with these offices. Social life. Make good choices. Take responsibility for your actions. 
be a change agent. As a student athlete, it is important that you make responsible decisions regarding not only the health of yourself, but your teammates, coaches, and roommates. Please watch the video. Please watch the video. You will be asked to confirm that you have viewed it and agreed to abide by the pledge. What will your legacy be when you graduate? Are you going to be remembered for the records you set during your athletic career, the honors you earned as a student, or the social and community impact you had on the campus? You're not gonna get a job because you're a baseball player, but. You will get a job because you're a student athlete. During your athletic career, you've learned skills that are transferable into the work environment. To be a good teammate, you've learned how to problem solve, work in a group towards a common goal. As an individual, you've learned discipline, motivation, self-control, time management, focus, and determination. All of these attributes are desirable by any employer. Research shows that student athletes get hired more often if their skill set is the same as other applicants because of their experience as a student athlete. It's never too early to start building your resume. As you represent yourself, your team, your coach, and the college, it is important to make a good first impression because they cannot be taken back. Be proud to be a Golden Eagle. We are proud of you. This concludes the NCAA eligibility meeting. The next step in the compliance process is to complete the new student athlete eligibility form. Once you've completed this form, you must print it and hand it into your coach at your first team meeting. Failure to turn this form in will prevent you from practicing. Practicing without completing this form is an NCA violation. You'll be declared immediately, declared immediately ineligible and the violation will be reported to the NCA office. Do not create a violation and jeopardize your eligibility. Thanks for your cooperation. <laughs>